in this video we are going to learn about inverse of a matrix now what is inverse if you have a square matrix a then inverse is another square matrix b of the same order such that a b equals b a equals i okay now this b we are going to denote by a inverse that is the notation for inverse that means always a a inverse is i and a inverse a is i okay now if we define inverse this way what are some of the ideas related to the inverse the first idea is what we call as uniqueness that means if inverse exists now what does it mean to say if inverse exists well we are going to see later that you can't always find a inverse for all matrices a some matrices you may not be able to do a inverse but that's not a big issue but if you are able to find an a inverse then it is unique that is the claim that this statement makes right what this means is if a b1 is equal to b1a is equal to i that means we found a b1 which is like an inverse and a b2 is equal to b2a is equal to i well actually the statement says that such a thing is not possible that means you can't find two different matrices b1 and b2 okay that satisfy this property and actually we can show that b1 and b2 must be the same how if these two statements are true then we can say that b1 we can write it as b1 times identity because any matrix is that matrix times identity of the appropriate order right now but i we know can be split as a b2 because remember by definition of inverse we got a b2 equals i now an important property in matrix multiplication is associativity we can change the brackets we can write this as b1 a times b2 we can't change the order of the matrices but we can change the brackets but what is b1 a b1 a is nothing but identity therefore we can write it as i b2 which is the same as b2 that means we started from b1 and we got b2 to be equal to b1 that means what you can't have two separate matrices like this that means inverse is unique if you have an inverse there is only one such matrix that exists so in general if you have a matrix a and you are able to show a b equals i immediately you can close your eyes and claim that b is the inverse of a okay what are some of the other ideas related to inverse well suppose you want to take product of two matrices okay now that means suppose you have a b and you want to find its inverse right the first thought that may occur is why not a inverse b inverse but just wait and we'll see what actually happens suppose c is a b the whole inverse right what can we claim about c well because it's a b is inverse c times a b must equal i now this kind of an equation can be solved for any unknown by repeatedly multiplying by inverses this is the big idea that we are going to learn about inverses right so c a b is i now both sides of this equation i can multiply by the same matrix okay so what i'm going to do first is i'm going to multiply both sides by b inverse of course this assumes that assuming b inverse exists that's very very important okay if that is true then i can do this okay now you can again change the brackets to write this as ca times b b inverse equals b inverse now this means b b inverse is i so you get ca is b inverse how do we solve again we can multiply by a inverse okay so we can write this as c a a inverse is b inverse a inverse again we are assuming that a inverse exists okay that means we can write 
c is equal to b inverse a inverse. That means, if you take a b and do its inverse, you get b inverse a inverse. So, many ideas we have learnt in this particular result, right. One is if you take product of two matrices and find the inverse, it will be product of the inverses but in reverse order. But that is not the only thing. Why did we even learn inverses? Because inverse is very useful for solving matrix equations like this. Multiplying by inverse on both sides is a valid legal operation. Division of matrices is not allowed. There is no such operation we have not defined. In numbers, we will just divide both sides by 5. If you have 5x is equal to 20, divide both sides by 5. But in matrices, you cannot divide both sides. Instead, you can multiply both sides by inverse in order to get identity. And once you get identity, c times i just simply becomes c. This is the main idea of defining inverses. You can solve for unknown matrices in an equation using the idea of inverse. In fact, what you will realize later is that the whole point of matrices itself is to be able to solve equations and equations that is linear equations are going to be represented in matrix form like matrix equations and they are going to be solved using the idea of inverse. So, inverse is an extremely important idea in matrices and the reason why matrices even have been defined. Okay? Now, what are some of the properties of inverse of a matrix? Well, first properties if you take inverse and then take inverse again, you will get the same matrix. Now, why is, is this true? Suppose you say A, A inverse is I, this is the inverse of A, but because this is true, I can also say A inverse A is I and this fellow is the inverse of the first matrix. Right? That means, A is A inverse is inverse. That is exactly what we have written here. So, this is sort of a proof for that. Okay? Next is, if you multiply a matrix by a scalar k and then take inverse, what you get is k inverse A inverse. Now, what is k inverse? Matrix you have inverse. What is k inverse? Well, this is actually k power minus 1, which means 1 by k times A inverse. Of course, the condition then being that k should not be equal to 0. So, for example, if k is 7, 7 a the whole inverse is 1 by 7 times a inverse. That is what this result is saying. Okay? The next idea we just derived earlier, the product of two matrices inverse is b inverse a inverse. Okay? But this has one more result, which is that if you have three matrices, then the result is c inverse b inverse a inverse. How do we prove this? Well, you can write a, b, c the whole inverse. So, LHS can be written as A times B C the whole inverse. Now, think of B C as some matrix. So, this means it is B C inverse times A inverse. A into some matrix D, right? But B C inverse, again we can use result 3 and write this as C inverse B inverse. So, you see even for 3 matrices, this rule applies that is write the inverses from back right now for four five matrices also same idea will apply and next the last idea is that a transpose inverse is a inverse transpose okay this is a little bit of a tricky result okay it's not at all obvious you may just think ah, i'll just take inverse transpose etc and do something okay but to prove this, what we are going to do is, we are going to assume that B is A transpose inverse. Then, what result can we write? If you take a matrix and write its inverse, right? then we can say B times A transpose is I. Of course, this means B is A transpose is inverse. But what we are going to do now is, we are going to take transpose on both sides. That means, B A transpose, the whole transpose is I transpose. 
what is I transpose? The same as I. We know that what is B A transpose? The whole transpose. In transposes also the order will change. So you will get A transpose transpose times B transpose is I. What is A transpose transpose? Well, it is nothing but A. So A times B transpose is I. Okay. Now why are we doing all this? Is this going to help us prove this result? Yes. Okay. And the way it's going to do is if you know that A into B transpose is I, what can you claim about B transpose? Well, we can claim that this is the same as A inverse. So I can say B transpose is A inverse. Why? Because A into that is I. But if B transpose is A inverse, take transpose on both sides. B must be A inverse transpose. But what was B originally defined to be? A transpose inverse. And then beautifully, we have written it as A inverse transpose. You might think I am doing some jugglery and just changing this thing. No, but these are all perfectly legal valid operations. Verify this. Okay. Therefore, we are able to make this important claim. You take a matrix, you are going to do transpose as well as inverse. You can change the order of these two operations you are doing on the matrix and the result will still be the same. Right? Okay. Now, some other results that are uh, important to just remember, I inverse is obviously I because I into I is I. Okay? Now, also the other thing is when we did multiplication, the question will be what about addition? For example, what about A plus B the whole inverse? Can we write it as A inverse plus B inverse? Maybe B inverse plus A inverse? Well, actually both are the same. Can we write it like that? No, this is not equal to A inverse plus B inverse this is very, very important. For minus also, you can't write any result like that. So, if you take sum of two matrices and you want to write its inverse, it is not equal to the sum of the inverses. Okay? So, these are all some of the ideas that you have to keep in mind. So, what we have learnt is the basic definition of inverse, which is that A, A inverse is identity for square matrices only and some basic properties relating to inverse which we can use while solving problems that have inverse in them.